Hey everyone, and welcome to the Couch to Creator podcast. We hit record on real life conversations about all things creator, the wins, the defeats, the highs and lows. And today we're here with Barte Gruhawa, who is a super talented composer, musician, and the next big thing in cinema music world. I mean, I don't even know how to... Film scores. Film score. You can say media scoring or, or media composer. Okay, media but, composer. Media composer. But thank, but, but thank you for having me here. <laughs> no, it's an absolute pleasure. Bartek, we're going to dive straight in with a, with a question. Do you think that the importance of music in film is criminally underrated? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Simple. That's it. Okay, that's <laughs> the end of the podcast now. I'm yes. just kidding. I'm just so kidding. <laughs> um, stay tuned then because we're going to hear all things music, how it fits into the filmmaking process, um, but also go a little bit wider into uh, sort of... The creator life of being in a creative role. Absolutely, because creativity is not just about filmmaking and photography. We want to give you a broader view of creators out there. And so we have Bartek here. Bartek, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Just introduce yourself to our audience. Of course, yes. So my name is Bartosz Gruchawa, as you know. I'm a, a 22, actually in two days, 23 years old mm -hmm. uh, composer and orchestrator from Poland, um, where I grew up. Just last year, I finished Berklee College of Music in Boston in the United States, after which I moved to London to, to uh, pursue my, my, my career, basically. And now, uh, during that journey, I was lucky to meet Sal and Bart, and that's why we are here today. Yeah, so we actually met Bartek because we were filming a mobile short film, and we needed a custom-made score for the film, and that's why you came in, yes, the, and you were magic. Shift. Yes. Yes, you did an absolutely amazing job. I mean, we'll get to that. We'll talk about the night shift. But in the meantime, let's go back to how it all started, Bartek. Tell us, how did your passion for music start? Like when how actually uh, the first thing um, was that i received from my uncle a small piano when i was like three or something and i started playing it okay so so then uh, when my parents were at some wedding when i was five they they saw this guy who was playing the saxophone on the wedding and he had uh, a poster saying that he teaches piano uh, so he so so they said okay let's uh, let's uh, get Bartek to have lessons with him, and I did, right? Okay. Uh, so, and then uh, coming into film music, uh, actually this, this moment I remember very clearly. Uh, I was around nine, and uh, my parents were watching this uh, TV series called uh, uh, Chas Honoru, the, okay. the Time of Honor, uh, which, which basically is around the Polish young people, how their lives changed because of the German occupation. Um, so there is this main theme that comes in. It's, it's composed by Bartosz Hajdecki. I was just about to say, I know that Chas Honoru, the music was composed by the very guy with which you are working right now. So this yes. is like a... Yes, I'm always laughing that like life made a circle because because I remember like going down the stairs and hearing this main theme. I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. Like the emotions inside of it, everything was so deep. And... Uh, and I, and I just felt like immediately struck by it. Uh, so and then, like as you said, funnily enough, uh, what ten years later, or actually twelve years later, I met with Bartosz, and now we are, we are friends. We are working together on on movies, and uh, yeah. That's amazing! Like fulfilling a childhood dream. Yeah, I mean, I would have never thought about meeting him uh, <laughs> and, and working with him, but but I just know that this was the moment where I thought, oh wow, maybe film music is the way to go. That's awesome. And also, like, your parents were really supportive in your creative Absolutely. pursuit. Yes. That's really important because yeah. often the creative things get left behind for, like, priorities of, like, studies and traditional education. Yes, they were uh, actually... My dad always used to say, Bartek, when you get a job, uh, try to get something that's not a 9-to-5 job uh, or, like, 8-to-4 in Poland. Um, so that you so that you don't follow the same path as me because uh, i'm sure that you will be much happier doing something else that's so, great yes that's, so, yeah that's so, awesome yeah so i'm laughing that instead of that now i'm working from 8 uh, a.m to 8 p.m <laughs> <laughs> instead of 8 to 4. Yeah. oh yeah this is absolutely same. the same for us yeah. so we, we we know that feeling um so let's kind of deep deep dive more into your music sort of taste and mm -hmm. i'm always curious what someone who is like a professional in music mm -hmm. thinks about 
kind of like the more mainstream music? Like, do you have like a favorite artist or a favorite song or favorite genre? Well, actually, the music that I listen to on my own is much different from film music. Uh, recently, I've been more into like uh, techno, even, okay. <laughs> which is funny because like maybe it's because of the contrast. Uh, you know, like when I sit in my room and I compose for big orchestra and write down the notes and everything is so elegant. And then I just get into my car and pop on some, you know, some EDM <laughs> or something like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't know, like maybe it's maybe it's good for the head to have that, that contrast. Uh, on the, on your daily basis nice yeah that, that makes me feel better about listening to trash music because yeah I, when i'm <laughs> editing i have to listen to lovely nice music um for the background and yeah it makes me feel better about listening to like megan the stallion and stuff and doja yeah. cat yeah. <laughs> doja cat's great okay if you say so um so do you have a favorite song of all time like if you had to choose one song is there a meaningful song something that's like this is this is the one or no i mean for me it changes every few months like one time okay. i have one, one favorite song and then it changes but uh, i mean for sure some classics like time by by hans zimmer like uh, this movie inception came out and oh. i just remember like being so struck by the, by the um by this piece uh, time which comes at the end of the movie at like the most uh, you know famous moment the culminating yes um mm -hmm. And then it became famous and cliche, and now it's not special to talk about it, you know. But uh, but 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 for me, it's uh, it's still like one of my core uh, pieces of music that I love. That's such a good answer from like a filmmaking yeah. and music perspective, actually. Love that. What's your favorite song? My favorite song is "Closer to the Edge" by Thirty Seconds to Mars. That's my mm. all-time favorite song, just because every time I listen to it, there's something like there's just some emotion that like it evokes and also i think actually again to do with filmmaking i love the music video the music video is like a mini documentary from their tour and it's just very powerful there's the storytelling aspect i love it i love it it's my favorite all time favorite song beautiful uh mine personally is a film score oh, of course really? hedwig's theme <laughs> oh yeah of course obviously we'll, we'll get to hp we'll get to hp because there's some more there's some more to talk about there Ooh, right? exciting yeah you've prepped that so absolutely so we know bartek's favorite music but now let's move on to how you make music so how many instruments do you play actually i only play three. Oh, only, uh, only three <laughs> no no i mean i i because i play the piano uh I think good enough to compose on the piano uh, and I also play a bit of drums and guitar but it's more for fun. Uh, okay. I wish yeah, actually my bucket list is, is to learn guitar uh, because when you start playing new instruments you kind of explore your new zones in music because sometimes when I play the piano I find myself going back into let's say my comfort zones playing the piano so like and so everything sounds good but it's nothing new right. Okay. And then for example when uh, when I play the guitar and I can't play guitar very well, then I, I'm like, oh, that's interesting, you know, and it's uh, and it's something new. So, yeah, so that's my bucket list for this year to to learn more guitar. Nice. Amazing. That's so important for creators as well to be constantly learning and get outside your comfort zone and try new things. This is why I need to start editing with DaVinci because I'm very too much in my comfort zone with Final Cut Pro. Um, but yeah, do you have anything that you want to learn? this year i mean i've been pushing on with film photography which has like reignited my passion for photography and i think again it's that case of changing the tools mm -hmm. which makes you look at it a different way makes you look at yeah. something that you've been looking at for 10 12 years like in my case of photography and now that i've picked up film it's a completely different thing the limitations uh, of the kit everything just makes you look at it different so yeah. yes or even for you like uh, because uh, to starts doing the podcast you had to learn how to use all these microphones you have to buy the gear le learn how to set it up quickly oh, so, yeah. it's, so so it's uh, again like new zone to explore absolutely yeah. that made you overall like better b better filmmakers and uh, and, so. and creators mm, thank you of <laughs> um, yeah. I, was, I was just gonna ask you about um what's your favorite film in terms of the music score because you mentioned inception uh, is that still I mean that's my that's one of my few core, core movies, but uh, also like um, I never I I really have something that's my favorite favorite. Uh, usually, for example, I could say that uh, for example, um, Harry Potter is my favorite music favorite favorite uh, uh, score in terms of orchestration. Yes. Okay. Uh, then when I go to for example uh, the Dark Knight, it's my favorite score in terms of the 
like how wide it is. Sorry. Uh, and then when I go, for example, to the Game of Thrones, it's oh. my favorite score in terms of how the themes of the characters develop uh, throughout the seasons. Oh, Actually, nice. it's funny. Uh, Ramin Javadi, uh, the composer of the of, uh, of Game of Thrones, he said one time that it, it was quite tricky for him because he had to compose, uh, let's say for for Little Finger, right? He had to compose his theme in a way that uh, at the beginning he was a good character, but in his theme there was like this small kind of uh, note of uh, of uh, this uh, intrigue, let's say, yeah. right? And then so that later when he becomes the bad character. Uh, he could explore more of that uh, kind of dark note that he did in the beginning, right? So, so it was almost like a, like a hint that there might be something at the beginning, and exactly. then he expanded it. Yes, That's and so he did that cool. uh, so well throughout for all the seasons. It's like a, it's a storytelling technique. Just just with audio. Yeah. Like, that's insane. I mean, I'm intrigued now, Bartek. So you mentioned like a character theme. So I'm like compl a complete noob with this regard so i want you to kind of tell us and the listeners more so each of the characters in game of thrones had a musical theme uh, for sure not uh, every character but the main ones they had their kind of themes because because uh, when you actually watch game of thrones they let's say when you have a scene with uh, cersei there's this kind of this, this piece of music that usually plays where uh, when she when she does something. And then it kind of brings us to this comfort zone that we, let's say, there is some new scene, but that we hear her music and we unconsciously know that there is something going to happen. With that her. we're hanging out yes. with Cersei. Yes. I, right yes. I never knew that. No. I mean, we don't think about it, but it's kind of unconscious. That's, that's amazing. In, that's incredible. That's I, when absolutely I, incredible. Whenever I think of like music in films and TV, I always think of like the general storytelling and l obviously the meaning and how that makes you feel. But on a wider perspective, like I didn't even think about, yeah, the individual characters. That's yeah. I think I think it's easy to be guilty of seeing it as like background music. I, so many people say background music, but it's so much more than that. I mean, this like character development and adding a little. I mean, I love that. Yeah, that's so that's... cool. Wow. I need to incorporate now that into our edits. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to make like a. Maybe we'll get Bartek actually to make you and me a separate. Theme. Theme Separate tune. themes, yeah. yeah. For seven, for Bart, yeah. <laughs> so, um, talking about working together, because we've had the pleasure of working together on a few projects now. So, for our listeners, we worked with Bartek on one of our first major short films, The Night Shift, um, which won multiple um, film festivals, which is obviously a huge part of due to Bartek's amazing work on it. It was actually one of the biggest comment comments on that video was about the oh, music. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of compliments for it. Um, and then we worked together on The Speed Date and Misaligned as well. So actually three short films together. Um, can you tell us what is it like working with filmmakers and especially like us who are still very new to the game and we realistically speaking have no clue about music. So yeah, like when we were in calls together, we would be trying to like give you our ideas and we would have to like make funny noises to try and explain what we wanted because we don't like, have that theory behind yeah, it. Yeah, zero like jargon, zero terminology. We're yeah. just like, Bartik has got to be like, beep, 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 yeah. beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's true. But the thing is that uh, for me, it's better if you don't know the music theory because what matters to me the most is that you kind of know what you want. Okay. In the movie, and and you always knew what you want, uh, and uh, sometimes when filmmakers uh, and creators know a bit of music, they try to incorporate their knowledge into my work, okay. and it's uh, becoming you know uh, okay. not as easygoing as with you, because with you, you, you said uh, okay more epic, so like okay more epic and uh, uh, more sweet, and so on, like, yeah, and then like these are not m musical ter terms but they are quite straightforward and it shows that you know what you want from the scene and you know what, what you're looking for. And many times I, uh, I worked with filmmakers that just didn't know uh, what they want. Uh, so, okay. so, they, so they ask me what should be there, so I send them something and they're not sure. You know, mm. and uh, always, uh, I mean, uh, of course, it's the creative path of, uh, of filmmaking that, that you kind of can come to the obvious conclusion together. But uh, for sure, working with somebody who knows what they want, even if they don't know music theory, is the best thing that you can uh, basically have. 
I guess as like a filmmaker from the side of like music creation, it's really important to know the feeling that you want more so than anything. Like you want it to evoke warmth and comfort or you want it to be like challenging and make you nervous or sad. Yeah, or... the emotions spearhead the, the yeah. technical side, I guess. Yeah. That's why there's this question that I always ask uh, uh, the, the directors about the projects that we're working on. What do you want the music to do in the scene? Do you want to build tension, or, or let's take the night shift, right? Uh, they are in the in this museum, let's say, right? And uh, should the music um, suggest that it's maybe a bit dangerous to hang out uh, the museum around night, or should it be, or should it create that magical uh, atmosphere, or should it be from the guards' perspective? Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. Right. So, so then when we uh, talk about like, okay, so what what is it supposed to do? Then it's starting to become more clear. And then we talk about the music that you like. And then we talk about uh, what kind of music would be best for the scene. Then I send you mm -hmm. the first version. You get some feedback. Second version, or maybe third version. Yeah. So this goes back to what we were saying earlier about like constantly learning new things. Like we would never have learned that aspect of filmmaking if we hadn't worked with you and have just been using tracks from Artlist, for example. Um, and also, I would say that also editing helped me to be able to describe that because, for example, on Artlist, you have to select the emotions, the genre, the theme, the mood. Tempo, everything. I mean, you can get as technical as you as you want. Like, there's a, there's a lot of... So that is a really good stepping stone, actually, into working with a professional. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the problem about uh, things like Artlist is that basically, let's say you have, you search for a love theme, right? There are so many kinds of love. It's not mm. uh, just, you know, like you can just, oh, I will take a love theme, put it in, and it's, you know, because for example, a love theme, like love between, let's say, father and daughter, uh, uh, between husband and wife who are like 80, uh, between, uh, uh, people who or oh, like La Land, like a love that never mm. happened, that that happened but couldn't uh, finally succeed. Like it, these are so different kinds of love, so that you you can't just take a love theme and it's working, right? Of that's course. why that's why working with a composer is always more special because uh, yeah, because definitely. You, because uh, or magic you can have magic, you know, like dangerous magic, you know, or or the night shift magic, right? And mm -hmm. the night shift magic was special, and uh, you wouldn't find it on the art list. Yeah. yeah, I think like as a creator, um, an editor where we make videos on YouTube, for example, you can kind of forget how important the music is because mm -hmm. usually you make your video and then you want to find something quickly, last minute that kind of fits, but it's, like- It's like a last minute thought, like an afterthought. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think definitely in the, you know, in the night shift, especially the fact that the, the music elevated the production like it was it was just as important as the visuals if not more important because like well I, it was a, it was a silent film so the music was telling half yeah, the story yeah there's no dialogue so yeah 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 absolutely and to be honest it was really outside of our comfort zone to 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 work for the first time together but i'm so glad that we did yeah i felt like an idiot over the calls being like can it go like do 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 yeah <laughs> No, but I mean, I think it was a, a great experience for because uh, also for me, I feel quite comfortable in this kind of uh, genre, mm -hmm. you could say. Uh, not as much in uh, the speed date, right? Because, yes. Uh, yeah. you, because in the speed date, uh, we had to do like this um, pop rock track, something like mm -hmm. that, right? And uh, and with that, uh, like to do it in three days, I was like, okay. So so then we took some other uh, things and uh, kind of. There's a mixture, right? Of yeah. Both. yeah, we always like to challenge Bartek with very short deadlines. Yeah, I was just going to say he's exposing us for the very last minute work that we do. But I mean, I feel like that's just the industry in general. That yeah, that's it. the industry in general, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Bartek, we've, so we've spoken about us working together on these projects, which were still, you know, over the course of like the last three years, let's say, um, still very early on. I mean, you're not even 23 yet. So this is still like... That's very, outrageous. Yeah, very much the beginning of your career. But... We want to talk about your the past like six nine months. I mean, things have sort of really skyrocketed for you, right? Um, we know that you've worked on, uh, you've worked with Bartosz Hojdecki, uh, Hojdecki, yes. sorry, um, who is uh, you know a very well known composer in Poland who has worked on a lot of 
big high profile films and you've worked on two films which were nominated for the Silver and Golden Lions in Gdynia, which is basically like the Oscars in Poland, um, the, like the biggest, most prestigious awards, uh, on Różyczka 2 and Święto Ognia. Yes, exactly. So can you tell us a little bit about these projects? I mean, these, this is like a big step up from working on The Night Shift with Bart and Sal. <laughs> it's, it's, it's much different because, uh, because my role in each production uh, was uh, different. Like in The Night Shift, I was the composer, producer, mixer, you know, and, uh, and uh, for Święta Ognia and Różyczka, I was uh, also a bit mixed role, but I wasn't the main composer, right? Because I was working with Bartosz. Uh, and uh, basically what we do is that Bartosz comes up uh, with, an, uh, with a musical idea for the movie, and then he presents me the idea. And from that idea, I create a bigger, let's say, piece of music that then goes back to him, he gives me some feedback, I, I send it, uh, him back with the feedback, and then finally when it's, let's say, a five or six minute piece of music, he takes it, again, cuts it up, and then puts into the movie. Okay. And, that's, and that happened both in Ryczka and in, and in Świętogna, and basically that's how we usually work with Bartosz. So it's absolutely great for me because uh, uh, like I just felt honored that I could, uh, at such a young age, could have a bit more, uh, let's say, in the in the in the creative process of the music. Okay. Because yeah. usually, let's say in the UK or in the US, that doesn't really happen. Usually, young people don't have as much uh, input into the actual music that later goes into the movie, and that's why I was like really proud, you know, like so I could uh, sit in the cinema and actually hear the stuff that I was doing uh, myself. That's wild. Yes. Absolutely mind blowing. I mean. Before we sort of go back to more like the technical side, because I want to hear more about like the process, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask more widely. That, I mean, this is something that's useful for all the creators of any type. How did you manage to like just accelerate your career like this? Because this is like insane. I mean, is it like connection? Connection? Is it in-person networking. networking? Did you send your CV and he was impressed? How? 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 Well, actually, uh, this year has been a bit uh, crazy for me so far because uh, I, I've been hired to, so far to work on uh, nine productions uh, for like, uh, I think it was seven feature, feature cinema movies and two TV series. Wow. TV series. Wow. Uh, and uh, of course, it's the start of the road, but uh, for sure, something that kind of made me go forward was that I was just trying to do everything. So I was trying to do uh, to have my website always on point with my newest tracks, uh, everything updated, to send out emails to professionals, to ask them for meetings, like, like to Bartosz, um, uh, posting on social media, uh, creating new demos, uh, watching uh, videos, how, how, how can I make my music better in terms of production, everything. Like, I just was trying to do like everything I could. And, uh, and then I was lucky that that finally I got some meetings confirmed. I I met with them, with some people from England, with Bartosz, and uh, yeah, and started working on those movies. So there was there was a lot of hustle involved. Yes, basically, yeah, every day because this is the thing about being uh, like a let's say a freelance creator like us. Uh, we can always work like 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 there's never a day off where you can just be like okay uh, everything is done i can just rest because for us there's never a rest because there's always something to be done always a list yes yeah. you can always uh, send out new emails to professionals you can always uh, update your website you can always create uh, new content uh, you can always do more yes exactly have have there been at any point times where you felt like it's become work and you're losing the passion or are you still like fired up 100% even at 3 a.m. in the morning? Mm. No, never. It's never. 22. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's been some tough times uh, during my last semester at Berkeley, actually last two weeks. I was drinking like so many Red Bulls a day and, uh, and being like on two hours of sleep for like two weeks every day. It was terrible. Like I, I, I gained gained weight. My face was like went down. It, you know, it was it was crazy. So then I had to take like three weeks of vacations to I don't know to recover. To, yeah, actually. I think that's a story for creators in general. Like we had an intense like hustle period for quite a few years actually, and then it caught up with us, and we're like, right, okay, now we're 
like burnout and let's chill. And I feel like now we're getting that balance back. Yeah, um, yeah. We've still got that fiery passion, but we also know when to take a break and play on Hogwarts Legacy. Well, sometimes we do. Sometimes we, sometimes we do. Um, how would you say your work-life balance is? Like, do, are you good at managing that sort of... Um, yes, I think, I, think I, I mean, I try to, um, to have a good work-life balance. Of course, it's hard because, uh, let's say, when, uh, uh, when you have, you know, like, f uh, family, uh, work, school, uh, let's say, girlfriend, then, like, to, to combine all of that, it's pretty hard. But that's why I like to be away, because when I'm away, it's just me, right? So, yeah. so then, the, like, the only thing I have to take care of is me. So, let's say, my workouts, my, my diet, and uh, my work. And then, additionally, some uh, time with friends, if I'm free, you know. Uh, so then it's much easier. But, yes. But course. when I'm here, um, the work-life balance is, is good. However, the progress in the work isn't as big yeah. as when I'm away. That's why I, that's a really good idea to use location as a like divider, even not as extreme as, you know, mm -hmm. across the other side of the world or yeah. like across the ocean. Um, but for example, having an office where you work separately to where you sleep. I think in any creative work, it's important to be able to have this um, sort of peace to, to, to work on the project. But with music, for, I would imagine anyway, it's even more particularly like important to have that, get into that flow state and be uninterrupted by the TV or by someone calling or, or, or wanting, you know, to, to take the bins out or, you know, the, the, the kind of small things that life always gives yes, you, basically. Absolutely. I'm 100% sure that when someday I'll have a wife and kids, I'll have my studio somewhere else. Uh, not, not at home, maybe maybe next to home or maybe in some other city. But basically what matters is that uh, you are not around all this. I mean, let's say the family energy is great, right? But then when you actually need to work and you need to focus on, on uh, for um, 12 hours straight, like, uh, you know, phones calling, you have to walk on the dog, like it's all taking you out of the, you know, let's say this trance state. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Sal is like that with editing. Yeah, nothing exactly. can, nothing can edit, it's... get to me. I'm like, don't talk to me, and then I'm gone to the world. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Especially when you have a deadline, because when you what? have, let's say, uh, like a more of a uh, loose month, you could mm -hmm. say, le less work, more leisure, then it's okay. But then when you ha actually have a deadline, let's say for, like this, it's Friday, so for Sunday, then it's uh, you, you just need to have peace. Definitely. Um, so I feel like we haven't talked about Harry Potter enough. Yes, let's talk Harry Potter. I mean, Sal is a huge Harry Potter fan. Yes. And I mean, so am I. We've got some bolt tattoos, matching bolt tattoos. Now. Wow. That's, New ones. Yeah. That's so sweet. Um, <laughs> and I mean... Are you a Harry Potter fan? Um, that was a hesitation. I, I wouldn't consider myself as a Harry Potter fan. I'm sure a huge fan of the music by the, by the amazing John Williams. Uh, but, but of the movie itself, I like the movie, I enjoy the movie, but I'm not a huge fan of okay. it. Okay. I mean, I think that's fair. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> okay. uh, um, no, but, uh, but for sure, and also, oh, actually, uh, going back to work, I've been lucky to start working with the orchestrator of, of Harry Potter. Uh, <gasps> um, his name is Alistair King. Alistair and he, King, yeah. You know him? Uh, well, yeah, we've heard of Yeah, I mean, we know... Like all shit, Harry Potter. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, so we worked on a few movies together this, uh, this year, and he is an absolute legend. So, like, so having the opportunity to to work with him, to talk to him, and spend time with him, I surely learned so much. Oh, it's, I'm uh, so jealous. I literally just listened to the Harry Potter soundtrack on repeat. Yeah, we actually in the past few like few weeks we've had, um, and it's really helped us. We've actually had like the ambience from like the Hogwarts ambience or whatever on in the background, and mm -hmm. it's such a nice vibe at home. This uh, might be a um, NDA type secret, but do you know if he'll be working on the new HBO Harry Potter series? To be honest, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you can tell me later. Because I don't know who's the composer. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we... If you can find that out for me... Let me know. Let me know, because... Okay, so my end goal dream for the next 10 years is to work on the new Harry Potter TV series, which is going to be on 
HBO Max. Mm -hmm. Um, first I was like, I will get coffee. I will do anything. I will clean shoes. Um, but then I would like to work on the set design. The end goal is the set design. Yeah. yeah. So this is like, nice goal. this like is the, yeah, something that's really driving me at the moment. Do you have like a bucket list project? Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, I have a bucket list project for the next year, for the next five years, and for for, for life, right? But uh, but but for now, my absolute bucket list is to get on the music team with uh, with Learn About or Harry Gregson Williams, uh, sorry, Rupert Gregson Williams because he, they're in England, uh, or Andrew Kavczynski, and work with them uh, as you, as you, as you said, maybe make coffee for them at first, but then. Uh, uh, maybe move on to additional music team because now I work for them, uh, n n not for Lorna, but for Rupert on additional mu on orchestration team, and uh, that's my goal to move a bit m even more into the music mm -hmm. side. Okay. Yes. It's such an important thing, actually, to uh, for Have any creator. I was just going to say about being like humble, like you can be as big as you want in your field but there's always something new to learn and by being humble and being willing to get coffee at first like yes. know that you're not in their realm yet um i think helps so much to improve your career and improve your skills i mean it's crucial it's the most important thing to yeah. like to go on these coffees and then wait for a response for four weeks and always the response comes at the most un an unexpected time. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that's yeah. massive advice. And uh, I thought that you, you were going to say I, I was really impressed by Bartik saying I have a goal for the next year. I have mm. a goal for the next five years, and then I have a you know top life goal. I think that's really important. I think f I mean, firstly, a lot of people go into doing these things without a goal at all, and they just see how things go. And I think a big big top end goal is always something that gives you direction. And I think it's really important to have even in case like for example when times get tough and you lose the maybe motivation or things are difficult you always look back at that top end goal but giving you is, direction as well on yeah. making sure you're on the right path but 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 also to have those stepping stones because i mean the top end goal might be 15 years away or 20 years away and you still need to have achievements and feel like you're progressing towards that goal so exactly i love that you have those incremental steps to take but but it's the same for Sal because he probably want to be you know one, one of the biggest filmmakers uh, ever but uh, but first we need to as you said clean shoes on set yeah or and then move on to some more creative side and then more and more I mean a dream I mean, even dream. taping down, taping down yeah. wires right on set is like that's a, crucial like you don't you don't want your cast to die yeah like, exactly yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's very important Exactly. Um, so, uh, so for me, the first step was to get into the London industry to meet the people and to start working, and that, that already happened. So now the first, the, the next step uh, is to start uh, working more on bigger roles, uh, and then the next step is to, you know, to uh, m maybe compose for a feature movie yourself, maybe in Poland, maybe in England, and and there you go until. You work with Christopher Nolan, and then and then you are done. Yeah. So maybe maybe we can somehow make that dream together, like com yeah, you compose want to it make for our feature film, show. and then oh yes, there we be... go. Then we go for the Oscars, and then everything is set. If we can make Sorted. it fantasy and magic theme, then it will work for my portfolio. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Harry Potter, though, just okay, one more thing. I I, I I wanted to just speak about the atmosphere the music creates because without the richness of the music in Harry Potter, I think is even hard to imagine. Like there would be no film, there would be no universe. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to tell us a little bit, like how do you actually kind of go from a blank canvas from zero? Like you, you're sitting down and you want to create a feeling and create an, an, an atmosphere, you know, for example, for Hogwarts castle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you start? How was the process? Well, I have I have never worked on uh, on Hogwarts Castle, but uh, but for me, when I start uh, working on some projects, uh, I d I discovered that the most important thing you can do at the beginning is to fully understand what's happening on the on the picture. Uh, so, for example, when we were doing the night shift, I I watched it like 100 times before talking to you, and then. Uh, because when you understand everything about the picture, why is this per person standing there? Why is why did this person say this? Why is everything happening? When you like get to the 
like deep down to the meaning of everything, then suddenly it becomes clear what needs to be done and what should be used and uh, and how to do it basically. So then, for example, then I started let's say playing something on the piano uh, to get maybe if if my if my gut is right, uh, and then after I see, okay, this is this is working, then I, I develop that idea into what's uh, the best for the film, right? Like, yeah, it's whether like, it's, it's an orchestra or some electronics or... It's like a stepping stone process, I think, yeah. for every creator. Like, with editing, for example, I just first chuck all of my footage onto the timeline and cut everything up that's worthwhile. Um, and just getting started gives you direction. Yeah, but I wanted to ask because in 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 music, I mean, it must be different than in video. Like I, I, in filmmaking, we have like a, a everything, all of the equipment and all of the techniques and everything. It's like a toolkit, right? So I guess for you, it's like the notes and the instruments and and I guess effects. Th these are like software. It's yeah, it's like having like a, a toolkit, and then you yes. kind of. Like, how does the process look exactly in that regard? Uh, so for every composer, uh, it might be different. But for me, I usually start with the piano or strings, like a string patch. And uh, and then when I get the idea and um, what what I want to do in the scene, then I start using the tools. So okay. so basically, you know, it's, it's other instruments, uh, some effects, uh, uh, or putting the instrument into some room, you know, like so that they sound far, far away or close. Um, yes. Okay, okay. That's really cool, like using the tools second, because I, I think with mm. filmmaking and creating, yeah, there's a lot of hype around the gear, like new cameras, oh, new yes. lenses, um, everything. So you, you can often prioritize mm -hmm. the kit before yes. the creation. Yeah, I feel like people look at, a, like, look at a concept and before even having a fleshed out script or whatever, they're like, oh, we're going to shoot this on the Ari and we're going to use these lights or we're going to use this lens. And then like there is people, I mean, obviously the creative process can start in different places, but there is literally people that will be like, I don't know what film I'm doing, but I want to shoot it on this lens. But then at the same time, that also gives you a constraint. And I think creators really, as a creative people, we work amazingly with constraints. If you can do anything in the world, you're just going to get paralyzed yeah. with choice. So if you say, okay, my dream is to shoot on this camera, there True. you go. You've yeah, got you're absolutely right. I, I'm, I'm just saying that like in different situations, different things might be the right path. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, a funny one. Do you have like a funny story or anything that's happened to you as a composer um, that you can share? We want some sort of juicy anecdote from the composer world. Well, usually when people from my industry have some anecdotes, they usually involve some funny situations with famous people and then everybody laughs, <laughs> you know, it's a standard. But for me, what I find funny myself is the situations that I find myself in uh, during that path that we talked about. Uh, and uh, a situation that I, I remember for f forever, for sure, is that, as I said, like the emails and the calls come at the point where you least expect them, right? So this year in May, uh, after graduation from Berkeley, because I graduated in December last year, but I took my diploma in May this year, we went on a trip to Egypt with my friend from Egypt, who showed us like the slums and everything. So. Uh, and, and two more friends, uh, so Yasin, Tom, and uh, David. Um, and we were in Egypt for, for the first day, so I, I come there, the weather, everything is like, I just get immersed into the culture, and suddenly I finally get a, uh, an email from, the, from, from a guy from Andrew Skitt, uh, who I've been with who I've been trying to meet for forever, for basically, yes, for five months, basically. And the email says, okay, Bartosz, uh, are you ready to go for a beer tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, my first day in Egypt, okay, yeah. Um, but obviously, obviously I replied, yes, of course. <laughs> so because, uh, because when you wait for something five months, yeah. nothing can stop you, right? So, so I said, yeah, of course. So I packed my things, so went to uh, London from Egypt, uh, unpacked. Uh, uh, and then like the funny part was when, when I was kind of... Uh, because he couldn't know, because he was absolutely convinced that I'm living there in London and I was just coming from my apartment. So, you know, so, so I had to no make myself look fresh with uh, 
not with my like huge backpack, but with something smaller, so that he, he could see that I, I'm coming from home and not from the airport after like a ten-hour journey. Um, and so you you were going straight from the airport to, to yeah. meet this guy. Yeah. Okay. This is yes. a couch to create a juicy, yeah. juicy yeah, story. Yeah, that is yes. incredible. Yes, and uh, so yes, and then we meet for basically thirty minutes, right, uh, uh, and beer, and that's it. And then when I go after this meeting. I guess I'm like okay. This is this is amazing. I I met this guy. It's going to work perfectly. Now I can go back to Egypt and uh, relax in the Red Sea or something. And then the the moment I step out of the bar, I get an email from uh, another guy I've been trying to meet uh, like also for a very very long time, uh, Alice King, the orchestrator okay. for Harry Potter saying, okay, Bartosz, are you ready to do some orchestration for tomorrow? Uh, uh, and, and, you know, I am with my backpack uh, after a 10-hour journey, um, you know, in the center of London with a flight booked for the next day in the morning. But obviously I replied, yes, of course, you know, uh, let's do it. Because like, because, Round two. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then it was, you know, just like a series of events. Like I was trying to check in in the hotel and they couldn't check me in at midnight, even though I had a reservation. And then finally, I I sat at the in my room at like 2 a.m. Worked until 7, and then uh, straight to the airport. Then worked the whole way to Egypt, and then a few days in Egypt. <laughs> but it was you know it was oh like that. God, and 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 for him also like I was like okay no no worries no worries everything I'm is free, good. I'm free. Yes, available. I'm free. I'm in London right now. You know. And uh, <laughs> and actually they they don't know this. Uh, like it's like like actually nobody knows uh, this because they were absolutely convinced that I was just you know like in London chilling. Uh, yes. But no then way. when I was finally done with everything, like this is the moment that I like truly live for. When you are done after you know after a story like this. You are done, and you just you know you go into the sea, and you're like, oh, you know, that's that's like. Why so aggressive? Yeah. What the? Yeah, that's that's incredible. Like, that's such an amazing story. But that that holiday in Egypt must have felt good. Oh, like, yes. like uh, you deserved yes. it. I still I still had like five days left after all of this, so I was like, okay, now I can just thoroughly relax. And the amount of satisfaction that you get uh, after, you know, like doing all of that stuff and then finally being able to relax. It's, uh, it's crazy. I respect that so That's much. That's incredible. Yeah, what a story. The what only story. thing I have to that level of dedication, I think, is I made you miss your final exam so that we could go to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child in London. Yeah, but that's not hustle. That's no, just I pleasure. know. Well, yeah. well, it was a hustle to yeah. get there. Yes. I don't know why, but these stories happen to me like always. I have like five stories like this. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but uh, but again, like when you go through them, then like at the time it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna fail, and if I fail, uh, nobody is gonna hire me again. Yeah, but then you yeah. kind of get through it, and now you know we are still here and laughing about it. I'm so, so inspired yeah. by that. The next thing we have come in that's like that we really want to do. We're gonna push and not yeah. let anything stop us. Yeah, yeah. I so, mean. But look, imagine, like for you, if uh, right now you received a call to go to the Harry Potter set, would you go? In, yeah, absolutely. Let's say in, yeah. in Japan, yeah. yeah, you'd be there tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, of exactly. Course, of course, of course. Life savings. Yeah, I'd give my yeah, life yeah, savings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up because we've been talking a lot of interesting stuff. But so I we're melting. To, yeah, we're melting. I wanted to ask, what are your upcoming projects that you can talk about? Can we have any couch to create uh, exclusives? Anything exciting? So. Uh, as I said, like these nine productions are already done, uh, which is two Polish, one Norwegian TV series, three uh, three British, and the rest American, and uh, they are all coming out in the fall. But uh, the ones that I can talk about right now uh, is uh, Chicken Run Two. That's yeah, massive. It, yes, yes, it's coming out. Uh, I think next month. Uh, with amazing music by Hardy Grayson Williams and the orchestration by uh, Alistair King on this one, and also, wow. uh, and that's the one that that, that I was working from uh, okay, Egypt. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a second one I can talk about is um, Ferrari. There is this movie coming out, uh, Ferrari, about Enzo Ferrari with Adam Driver in the main role. Um, Sick. And the, and 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 the music there composed by Daniel Pemberton and orchestration by Andrew Skitt. Which is the, the the guy that that I went to beer with, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, it's all yeah. it's all coming together. Yes, so it all all connects. Uh, yes, so uh, and about the rest, I will tell you later. Yes. Okay, cool. Nice. 
that's cool. That's amazing. It sounds so good. And like, we're so inspired by your career path and everything that you've done so far. It's insane that you're 22 and you're doing this already. Like, yeah. I can't wait to see what the next 10 years looks like for you. Thank you. Okay, and finally, one more thing. Do you have any advice that you can give to creators, whether it be um, art, filmmaking, photography, any creative career? Well, obviously, there is plenty of, of, of advice uh, for people like us. But uh, for me, uh, one of the most important things that you can do is that first create yourself a comfort zone uh, where you can be creatively free and feel at home. So, for example, like for me, it's when I w wake up at 8.30, have my workout, breakfast, and then start working. And then I sit and I'm, I'm like, okay, ready, and I feel comfortable. And then when you do that, uh, get out of it. So, for example, you know, uh, so when uh, you m mostly what you do is create content, maybe try to reach out to some people who also create content, maybe get, uh, maybe set up a meeting with them. If it's not your strong point, it's uh, like strong suit to talk with people, you know, maybe just do that and uh, work on the stuff that you are not good at. So, so seek discomfort in a way is yeah, this, like seeking that. outside of the comfort zone. Yeah, is, is, yes. is the exactly. But also at the same time, remember to work on the stuff that you are good at so that you can become the best in that uh, thing that you are good at and uh, you can become good at what you are not good at. Yes. Also, the cycle is incredible because like you will if you're in your comfort zone and then you switch to the discomfort zone and then you know once you've done that you go back to the comfort i bet that's really like yeah all of a sudden a powerful circle yes like for example for you when you were recording uh, uh, the james bond uh, thing you were you know like at first probably in your comfort zone then it was you know a mayhem and then when you were editing again you were like okay now i'm at home again right? yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's so yeah, true yeah, absolutely. i love that um, awesome. I think that's everything. Yes. That was amazing. I love that so much. Thank you for being on the Couch to Creator podcast. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you, Bartek. And thank you so much to our listeners for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed that. And uh, Make sure you keep up with Bartek's career. He is definitely going places. And he has an amazing website, by the way, as well. Yeah, just, just thought I'd tell you that. Yeah. So, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And have a great day or night or whenever you're listening. See you in the next one. See you. Bye. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Ah, right. Thank you. That was so much fun. <laughs>